In mid-1970s Great Britain, punk rock spoke to the frustrations and rage of mostly working-class adolescents and young adults, frustrations and rage the punks of that moment wore on their proverbial sleeves. This was apparent in their fashion, in their politics and in the music to which they listened breakneck songs played at harsh volumes by do-it-yourself players who might have only picked up their instruments a week before someone booked them for a basement gig or pushed record on the tape deck. Into the scene stepped the Sex Pistols, drummer Paul Cook, guitarist Steve Jones, bassist Sid Vicious and the singer known as Johnny Rotten, the band's music was a scabrous racket whose lyrics dealt with a pending authority and good taste in all its forms it was music to cause outrage every blessed minute of it. This is the tragedy behind one of rock and roll's most incendiary musical forces the Sex Pistols. Steve Jones Hits Rock Bottom Guitarist Steve Jones believes he was always predisposed to alcoholism and drug addiction, the things that almost took his life as a younger man. There were quite a few big drinkers among the men in my family, he wrote in his memoir Lonely Boy Tales from a Sex Pistol, and I just had that obsessive compulsive gene from day one. Of course the drug that essentially broke the Sex Pistols was heroin, Sid Vicious was hooked and so was Jones, even after Vicious died, Jones continued using. I didn't think, I better not do this, because look what happened to Sid, because I just don't think like that, he told Rolling Stone. Jones blames himself for the Pistols' breakup he thinks the band acted too hastily in parting ways, he told Rolling Stone that with hindsight, he thinks they should have gone back to London, taken a rest and given the whole thing another shot. He said in another interview that he was miserable with the band but was having a better time with drugs and partying. It was a lifestyle that would eventually cause him to bottom out, personally and professionally. Johnny Rotten had health issues as a child. Raised in poverty, John Lydon lived with his family in a rundown apartment in North London, surrounded by vagrants and filth. In his memoir Anger is an Energy My Life Uncensored, Lydon remembered being seven years old, I'd make paper boats and float them in our backyard, so I touched the water, then I touched my mouth. Little did he know he was sharing his yard with disease-carrying rats, he came down with meningitis as a result, suffering headaches, dizziness and hallucinations before falling into a coma that by his recollection lasted seven months, when he awoke Lydon had to endure painful spinal fluid drains up to three times a day. The drains caused a curvature of his spine, affecting his posture and to this day, he cannot stand completely straight. His time in the hospital also affected his eyesight, forced to wear glasses he could not physically abide after a while, he developed a farsightedness that caused him to glare in order to focus on nearby objects, it was a bad situation, to be sure, but fitting for the man who would grow up to be Johnny Rotten, perpetually glaring at everyone. Meningitis also affected his memory. It took some time for him to recognize and trust his parents even after going home. The Sex Pistols' Huge Rise and Calamitous Fall The Sex Pistols were born the day in 1975 that John Lydon walked into the band's rehearsal space wearing a Pink Floyd t-shirt with the words I hate written above the logo, and walked out of the rehearsal space as Johnny Rotten. For the next three years, the Pistols would tear through stages at colleges, art schools and other establishments, Steve Jones summed up the band's philosophy when he told a reporter, actually we're not into music, we're into chaos. Sid Vicious joined the Sex Pistols in 1977 replacing Glenn Matlock not because Sid could play bass, but because he looked the part of a punk. The band's single God Save the Queen was banned by the BBC but went to the top of the British singles chart anyway, in late October of that year, they released their only studio album Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols which Rolling Stone then called just about the most exciting rock and roll record of the 70s. Several major retailers in the UK refused to stock the record, nevertheless it went into the British album chart at number one. In January 1978 the Pistols began a 12-date US tour, but the group broke up after the final show in San Francisco, torn apart by infighting and drug use, at the show's conclusion, Rotten asked the audience, ever get the feeling you've been cheated, he then dropped his microphone and left the stage.
John Lydon was nearly on Pan AM Flight 103. On December 21, 1988, according to the Mirror Pan AM Flight 103 departed from Heathrow Airport outside London for New York. Shockingly and tragically, the plane never arrived in the US an explosive device planted in a cargo hold exploded mid-flight, sending the fiery aircraft crashing to the ground in the town of Lockerbie, Scotland, everyone on board 243 passengers and 16 crew members died, along with 11 residents of Lockerbie. A number of well-known international celebrities, including a punk rock legend were nearly among the deceased, according to interviews in the 2018 documentary Lockerbie The Unheard Voices, Sex and the City star Kim Cattrall cancelled her ticket on Flight 103 in favor of a later trip, and classic Motown act The Four Tops missed their flight because their taping time for the British TV show Top of the Pops changed. Sex Pistols frontman John Lydon also had a spot on Flight 103, along with his wife. On the day of the trip Lydon's spouse took too long to get ready.